guys welcome to the one percenter podcast man i think we haven't done a podcast together in like three years oh, this is back in years. okc back in the old we days some, baby we got some pent up shit we're about to go if on. you're out there and this yeah, is guys. gonna be too much energy for you this is gonna wake your little ass up then i would advise go over to a sleepier yeah, podcast you're a baby seal watch out because the navy seals are coming the navy through seals that's are right here. the contenders not the pretenders come on little bitches hey guys so listen number one obviously we've started this podcast you can tell i've got two guys together yes they are twins and i know that you guys already know that if you watch me you'll see these guys travel the country with me you know 250 days out of the year we're in a different state in a different place on a different stage or in, involved in a big company and these guys they, they roll everywhere with me um they're they family um they they've been with me almost since day one on when we built our company and man it's just they're watchdogs in our company they have crazy fire you know they they they, they run the biggest numbers which i always talk about like results don't lie people lie but results don't yeah, lie really. Um, you know, but, but they care, dude, their hearts are massive. They've, they have beautiful wives and beautiful kids. They're family men, you know, so as you see their, their energy, people are like, oh, these are sales. No, these guys are family men that are so excited to live. It's just an amazing time to be alive, yeah. to live in this time that we're in. It's just crazy. And everybody's so asleep. Um, so the Elliott Group has just grown to new levels. And I thought, who else would I want to interview than my top two guys? Now, yeah. by the way, listen to me. They kill it in sales. Um, they kill it in self-development. They're massively coachable. You know, I've learned as I talk to a lot of people um, that, are, that are high performers, they're high achievers. You know, they're really like not open-minded to doing things differently. They have their way. That's the way they're going to do it. And they just run that path, but they never end up being an icon. Mm -hmm. They never end up being a legend. And I think in the Elliott Group, the reason why we've been growing and scaling so fast and doing things where all these other companies are like, dude, how are you guys doing that? Is because as we're getting the results and we're breaking records, we're also on this other side so coachable right. and so flexible to maybe think, hey, maybe there's a better way, right? right? Mm -hmm. Like this is how we're doing it now, but like I'm totally always. open minded if somebody can do something better. And so we're always learning, and we actually teach. Then I hate teachers who won't learn totally right? so i think that's why we killed this, well so. uh, andy thanks for the introduction but you really just described yourself man that's exactly who you are and, mm -hmm. we've, and well, we've it's who we been, are yep. well it's who you are and you went through you did all of that stuff you learned you recreated you you're loving you're the best guy in the world to work for so we just be, we just became the same way you know so we're we're pumped up that was awesome and i'm, I'm just thankful that I get to follow a guy like you. Can I tell you guys something that shit. pisses me off about Andy just to start this shit? I'm just going to tell you, Andy. Here comes the I'm just going to tell you, Andy. Give it to him. Andy. I'm just going to tell him. Give it to him. Listen, number one, because oh. he's he is coachable, if you ever tell Andy something or a book that you're studying and you're going in to give a seminar and you're inspired by something, Andy is so moldable that he will just snatch that shit, learn that entire subject, and then you just see him just transforming some of this shit around and i remember when we would go give our first seminars i would tell andy everything that i was going to do and he would and listen he to would me do and it. he'd have this look <laughs> on his face and then I'd, I'd i'd see him talking i'm like he's got my entire verbiage yep. he learned dude you are one of the most psycho learners which brings me into like what i really wanted to talk about i don't know what you guys <laughs> want to talk about but i want to talk about being a psycho competitor because there's a lot of people out there yeah. they talk about their winners they talk about numbers but when it comes down to it dude they don't have this energy they don't have this passion they don't really want to win dude i've made a living out of bankrupting and beating the shit out of people for a long time and i'm going to say it like that because i mean it like that take it for what it is i'm coming for blood after everybody and that's why i'm so coachable that's why i want to learn that's why i want to keep the edge i see a lot of people dude they make money for one or two years i've been doing this shit for 15 years beating the crap out of everybody in my industry in whatever industry that i'm in and how do you do that well number one you're coachable there's so many leaders out there that are watching this podcast right now dude you haven't learned a new skill in years you watch podcasts for entertainment you don't watch podcasts to grow your team ain't growing and you're just sitting there like a stagnant little piece of shit and we know who you are i can see it in your eyes you leaders I can see it in your eyes, you salespeople, and so many of you admire Andy, and you sit out here and watch these podcasts, but my question is, you what are you going to do about it? Right. What, do you really truly live this shit? Because we live this, man. You want to talk about our families? Andy opened it up, and he's talking about our families. Like, we got kids, 
We want these kids to see that no matter what level you go to, that there's always another level. Right. That you're never peaked. There's never there's you're you you never stay stagnant and you always continue to grow. So we've adapted that from you, Andy. We've literally taken that. It does piss me off that you're always like a little step ahead because that won't happen for a long time. You're getting old. And <laughs> Yeah, and you know. I'm just telling you, dude, like, don't we're, you get pissed about that sometimes? Well, we're on his ass. Too. Like, we're on his hey, ass, but he'll stand up and be like, I'm the hardest worker in the company. And it's true, he's the hardest worker in the company right now. now. But we are actively going to kick Andy's ass. So that's my goal. I'm it. calling my shot because I just... I'm just relentlessly trying to kick his ass. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Well, I heard him. He called my wife earlier, right? Mm -hmm. And Jackie had a missed call, so then I was talking to him. And Jackie's like, hey, Ian, you, you called me. Did you need something? And he's like, yeah, I don't want to say it with Andy on the phone. Yeah, I And she's like, it. oh, okay. And he's like, well, listen, I was going to tell you about this book, but I didn't want to tell Andy about it because I know he's going to order it. And the second you got on the phone, I ordered it. I know. It pissed me <laughs> off. I couldn't believe that I said it while you were in the car because here's the deal. If you tell Andy about a book or anything, he's yeah. going to go digest that whole book. And listen to this. It just it's eats not, me alive thinking that it, someone has taught something that I don't know. How many books do you think you've read, like, this year? Dude, we're I'm on, just chewing them up. We're on month four of the year. Man. You're probably at, like, 50 or 60. Yeah, I'm just chewing them up. And so, like, when I told his wife that, I'm like, hey, this be a good book for you. And then Andy said something. I'm like, oh, shit, he's in the car? Like, because he's just going to go take the book now and make it his own, you know? Yeah. Well, there's so, I mean, so many people have lived before us or that are even alive now that we yeah. don't know. And they've li literally given what it took them 20 years to learn away. Right there. In a 200-page book. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, you'd be an idiot not to get a pen and piece of paper and make that a freaking workbook and just tear it apart and rip sentence by sentence and strategy by strategy out of it mm -hmm. and figure out, like, you know, hey, what did that mean to them and what does that mean to me? Right. And then, like, I, I thought I, I thought I was a life? slow learner or something was like like in sales and see I got a drive so my drive would just outweigh everybody's and so when I was in the car business you know me and Evan were the top salespeople in the industry out of everyone I've never lost on a sales floor like not once like nobody can ever come out and say hey I ever beat the twin selling cars because it never freaking happened so that drive and that passion I think that that's something that's in, inside of me right but the learning part was my hard thing when I got around you and I saw you like sit down and just write out all, and you have the same ADD as me and you would sit down and write out all these lines or you'd have Jackie read it to you like that's when I started going to the another level because then me and Evan started sitting down and writing out our own training and like uh, getting obsessed with it artist. because there's another level of learning and a lot of people just reach one level of learning which like I was a good salesperson but I wanted to go to this next level and that whole next level was just based off of learning yeah you know that's what I mean right. Um, in, in, introduce yourself. I mean, with you guys. I know it's Evan. Evan has an arm tattoo all the way. It has a sleeve. I have bigger triceps yep. too. So, so Evan that. has the sleeve, <laughs> and then we and we have Ian. Yep. Um, they're they're both thirty four years old. Yep, yeah, thirty four. Right? You guys live in Scottsdale with me. Three four years ago, you guys moved from yeah. Denver, Colorado. Yep. Here, um, let's go back to like, and if it's cool, like, yeah. Let's go back to like some things that your grandfather told you guys you were gonna do. Mm -hmm. And then totally. let's talk about when you guys started going to an event, because I think everybody watching this has someone at one point in time that said, you're going to become something great. And if they didn't, I mean, I never really had anybody, but like you guys tell me y'all had y'all's grandpa. And I yeah. think that that's cool. Yeah. And then the self-development journey actually activated mm -hmm. that, you know, it's like, I, I think you sent me a, a deal the other day mm -hmm. and it was like, you know, I told, I told myself who I am. Mm -hmm. I told the world what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And then the world heard me and it activated. Totally. And like, that's how it works. Well, you, you, know? you said one thing the other day, the enemy doesn't want you fully activated. And so like the enemy, the devil, whatever you want to call it in your life, doesn't want to see you fully self-develop. And, you know, when you have like your dad is your dad, like, you know, like you have your son, he's over here. When you tell him something, sometimes it can just fall on deaf ears. Like the law of familiarity, it happens. And, you know, sometimes they don't hear you. That's why we're a coaching company because we go in and say a lot of the same things leaders are saying. But with my passion and energy, it might just be a little bit different and they receive it, it's right? different delivery. Right. My grandfather gave me the blueprint in life. He would always tell me it's about believing in yourself. You guys are capable of more. You guys are capable of a greatness. But I just never really like, like I, it, it all made sense unfortunately when he was not here right it, because my, my brother and I did a lot of things like the wrong way we've been top salespeople, you know in the industry since we were like 18 19 years old but we always did things like 
a little bit like we, we just would go whatever like if we were around bad people we just were bad you yeah. know and if we were around good people we were just proximity good. yeah yeah and so my grandpa would always try to steer us towards the good things in life and steer us towards learning and we just were just sales dudes that just didn't really care about any of that stuff or, or developing but he always when he was dying you know this is the last year that he was living he was he was like man i'm so glad to see you guys around andy like i'm so glad to see you guys and this is before we had the big brand this is before and all we of this stuff started. and you were just getting started and he's like i'm so glad to see you guys have this new influence and it was probably because you were saying a lot of the stuff that he was saying right. but since it was you saying it not him saying it we were like oh my god and we we're so fired up and we we're going after it so you know I, I start to think about that in companies and even with my kids do you search for ways for your team to be able to get new information from new people or is your ego blocking you from getting really what you want in your company or mm -hmm. from the people that are around you so he always told us we could be great he was he was an amazing human he was a teacher he impacted millions of people he opened up a school in Denver Colorado which is a really famous school the Denver School of the Arts he was famous for he walked in the restaurants everybody knew him like he was the mayor so we had this outgoing attitude he could put it on like two seconds which people say we can now and so your kids are watching who you are like most of the stuff is caught not taught like I caught a lot of like this personality and stuff from my kids or from my grandpa mm -hmm. and so your your kids are catching your discipline right now they're catching right. your edge right now well and that's what Andy or, always or talks they're about not. Yeah. Or they're not, or they're not. Yeah. But, that, but that's what always Andy always talks about it's like your team, the people around you, they're watching you. And with our grandfather, he had such a great personality. He was so caring. He was so loving. So a lot of the things that you kind of introduced on how we started, we caught a lot of those things from him. But hanging around the wrong people uh, taught us everything that we didn't want to do. So a lot of the things that we do now um, – it's like Tim Grover talks about with your dark side, the bad edge, the, the you know that 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 the things like you're running from. Mm -hmm. We use a lot of that stuff to sell right now. I think a lot of people want to talk about all the good stuff, like your wise and all that stuff, which is cool. Yeah. But you know, Ian and I use a lot of the a lot of the reason, a lot of the stuff that we didn't like about ourselves. I love that. You know, and, and we I always operate. try to, and you always I talk about emotion. exposing your weaknesses. I think the only the the reason why we've been able to grow under you so much is we were good salespeople, but we weren't good people. We were good salespeople. Like, let's get this completely. You can be a good salespeople. You can be a great salesperson, or you can be an unstoppable salespeople. But unstoppable salespeople, they don't have personal problems. They can influence. They can they can persuade. Mm -hmm. But they can also do it where they have radical empathy and they can put themselves in other people's shoes because they've been there. Mm -hmm. You've been through a lot of stuff. We've been through a lot of stuff. So that gives us the ability that it qualifies us to be able to help other people that have been through the same thing. But we go back to that all the time, mm -hmm. and we we're constantly working hard, so we never have to have that life again. And so I kind of like coaching people that have a lot of problems. I like coaching people that have been through a lot of shit. Yeah. I like coaching drug addicts. I like coaching well, leaders well, that have screwed addictive, over their teams. Addictive yeah. people yeah. are. are and can you That's go over? The, can you go over that? Like, that. so if somebody has ever had an addiction, porn. Yes. You know, whatever. I don't care if there's an addiction. Yes. Show us how you can. So flip one of the biggest things, one software. of the biggest things that I like, we have a guy on our team. His name is Tommy Propovich. Propovich. I like coaching guys that have addictive personalities. I have addictive personality. I used to like to drink a lot. I used to like to party a lot, chase girls, all the stuff that I saw my ugly older girls. brother doing. Ugly girls. Mostly too. ugly girls. Well, his standards were low at the time. I had low standards, bro. Honest, I, well, I was just trying to, I thought, you know, yeah. I was closing volume, not growing, like, <laughs> not, not, not volume. I worked at a volume <laughs> store. Yeah, I worked at a volume <laughs> Nissan <laughs> store. Like, we <laughs> were high gross in individuals. Hey, guys, sorry to interrupt the video. So as you're watching me interview my top two reps, Ian and Evan Macklin, these guys are some of the best coaches in the world. If you want to get close to me, right, you guys see the number on the screen below. I want you to text this number. This is a direct number straight to them. If you guys have a big business, if you have a badass team, if you want to build a badass team, or if you're just looking to self-develop to a whole new level, I want you to text these guys right now and let's set up something together. Let's get back to the video. Okay. But I like coaching guys like Tommy. I like coaching people that have been, like Andy but always says, the people that have been through the most can end up with yeah, the so most. Yeah, so let's talk about Tommy for 30 so seconds. Why, when why, you, why he can when grow you, so fast. Because when he can flip that addiction into the gym and success and personal mm -hmm. development, those guys are psycho. Totally yeah. psycho. Th those are the guys I look for. Tom, yep. Tommy, when he was doing drugs, the minute the drugs was like running out, like he had to have more. Right. He had to go find the dope man. <laughs> totally. Immediately, right. right? And then when he was doing drugs, he would always do way more than he was supposed to right. do. Yeah, he right? Yeah, he those four times. R you're right. No, and it died. Yeah. And 
now, if you look at him, like he's built, he's he's, a, he's, he's incredible. Yeah, he looks he's like a, a good Greek looking god. guy. He's like a Greek god, yeah. and people would never guess it, yeah. right? And so I think that now, like when he feels that, like he's gonna miss the gym, like he starts to get that itch. Yes, like yeah. he's like, oh you wait, can wait, see wait. it on him. Yeah. yeah, you can tell. You can I, feel it. Yeah, I was just telling my gym, my wife this morning is that we've been moving into our house. We've had all this stuff going on, and this morning I was like, I was like, babe, I, I, I feel my skin crawling. Yep, I'm like. I'm like, I got to go into the gym now. I have to get in there. And it's a mental edge right. that like will keep you from getting into that dark side. Yes. And, and because I was addicted to all the bad things, now I'm addicted to all the good things. Right. Yeah. And like as, as, as much as I fought for the bad addictions, now I fight for the good ones. It's yes. just turning in from like, you know... Just one thing to the other. Yes, dude, and I yeah. love, I love, I love, I love that. I love... Super, superheroes. And I yeah. also love being able to have testimonials like that and we have inside thousands of, that way inside of our program with people that were bad leaders. Now they're great leaders, people that got comfortable. Now they're, you know, they're, they're killing using, it. they're killing it. Right. Um, but man, there's nothing cooler than seeing a comeback story like Tommy's. He's been with us for three years. Now he's one of the top producers in the Elliott group. He has an, a, a, an obsession towards growth and personal development that when we're coaching the top leaders and top business people in the world that are under you, some of your best clients, they have that same trait. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that trait, I think you need to figure out a way to find it. And one of the ways we found it is running from our, the darkness and like using that edge and, and, and also remembering some of that psych, that psychoness. You got to become a psycho competitor, which is a lot of what we wanted to talk about today. Yeah. And what, so what if you haven't had a dark side? Yeah. What if you haven't been a bad person? What if you had parents that, that raised you and everything was right, good like you don't kids. have a broken family like, all like our, our kids, kids right yeah. like what what kind of advice would you give to people like that mm -hmm. well i would i would talk i would do what you talk about which is anchor your your emotion onto a why and like understand that your family at some point there was nobody in your family that made money they didn't make the decisions to be great and then your parents came along and they they put everything they had and if you're watching this right now you want to be successful so you're going through the process of what it takes to be successful so if your family was successful you should know about how much effort how much time how much much consistency how much energy it took and that part should probably be the part if i'm just thinking mm -hmm. i would want my kids to take that and and have that be their drive and their motivation to not want to see the family or the legacy slide i want ian elliott to take your name and i i want him to care about it i think you have to like true i i, I don't honestly i don't know 100 percent, but i think that you gotta they gotta Oh, they got to care about what that person did before them. They got to oh. care about their legacy, like in, in a way where it's unreal. Yeah. And I think if they respect that legacy, then they're going to go out there and they're going to go out there respect and respect their all and give their you life know? for it. Like, you know, but then also what, what kind of community are you in? What, like if you have, if you're in a comfortable community, you're going to be comfortable. You know, you need to seek discomfort. You need to demand it out of yourself. True. And if you're just running in a freaking comfortable environment then you're just gonna be comfortable i see a lot of people they watch this show and they're like i'm just waiting until i'm ready to meet you guys because i don't know what's gonna happen dude you're never gonna become this the person that you want to become we're looking for the people that know that there's another version inside of themselves and they're sick to death to get it like that's who i'm looking for make no mistake about it i might not know how to train comfortable people a whole lot i mean i guess i can understand it but I'm looking for the people, for me, like, you know, you always say... Stay in the same as prison. Yeah, yeah, stay in the same as prison. I'm looking for those that are looking for us that really And want whether to you shit. have the dark side or the good side or not, you should know that if you're There's watching this, version. you probably don't want There's to be yourself. Version. So you're saying get around people that can remind you who you are. Yeah, and, and, you and wanna, who you want to be. And so yeah. what we do at the Elliott yeah. Group, right, is like business coaching. We do personal coaching. We line the right people up for Andy. So we're always constantly figuring out. Like, people think I'm selling them when really... When I'm on the phone with them, I'm letting them sell me. I'm like, oh, that's guy, that, that guy doesn't work for Andy. Like this, Andy's after changing everybody. But realistically, you have to have some type of dog in you that wants to eat. If you don't have that dog in you that wants to eat, you're screwed. And there's nothing we can do for you. Right. But if you're a dog that wants to eat and then you're just missing a couple components like, hey, the mentality, the health, the this, right. the that. Well, then, dude, we'll repair that. And when you repair that, who do you become? I wasn't always this person. I fucking hated myself. I hated the way I sounded. I spoke the conviction I had, the passion I had, dude. I just didn't, I knew that there was something inside of me that was dying to play a bigger game. Yep. The only way that you get there, make no mistake about it. You can do whatever you want to do, but I know that the hack, I know that the blueprint is everybody needs a good coach in life. Everybody needs somebody mm -hmm. to apply some pressure on that fucking ass and to move you from where yeah. you're at to where you want to go because your ass is not going to do it by yourself. It's just the truth. Right. You are not going to do it by yourself. I wouldn't be this person 
without you. I know I wouldn't because I would have just done, I would have just lived a good life. Better in, than most. Yeah, but it was but good the, though, the, but it was good. It Ian. was good. Yeah, but the enemy of a great life is a good life. Yep. And I had a good life. Mm. Um, it really wasn't that good, but I tricked myself into thinking it was good until I got around people that had a great life and then it pissed me off. And yeah. then I'm like, I'm so fucking capable of that, but why don't I have that? Well, right. I don't have that because of the choices I'm making, because of the information that I have in my brain, and because I'm a pussy. So <laughs> I just decided not to be a pussy, and I decided to go get the information. And then I didn't do like everybody else watching this. Like some of you, you've probably trained with me, and then that's like you trained one time. Like when I trained with Andy, I viciously attacked Andy for the information that he had in his brain. Viciously. If he said, we were about hey, to rip his arms off. If he said, Hey, I'm going to Tampa, bro, you're going to see me in Tampa. Hey, if you're going to do this, I'm calling his right hand man, which is me, not Evan. And I'm going to say, <laughs> Hey, yo, where's Andy going to be, bro? Where's he work out at? What is he doing? Put me on the damn schedule. Those are the people I let get around Andy. I don't let the little, the little pikers that are just like, I just want to be good. You know, where's Dude, Andy that's at? Not, that, I'm I'm just gonna take you and put you in a different a, a little separate area and see if you can grow in that little the kids area, area and then get yeah, close. The kids, the kids area, area. the kids okay. table, the little child section. I always say there's two types of people: those that want to take over the world and those yeah. that just want to pay their bills. Yeah. Or you said, what I was mean, that famous there's really thing you two used to buckets. Say? You well, know, you'd be like, hey, I made eight hundred grand. Or do you or do you really want to know, or you just ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that's what I ask people over the phone. I'm like, they're like, I want Andy's team. I'm like, well, do you really want to know how he did, or are you just asking? And then they're like, no, I really want to know. I go, okay, strap your fucking seatbelt on because I'm going to tell you. Number one, if you want a team with energy and passion like Andy, you have to have the energy and passion of Andy. Oh, oh man. Oh, I want the excellence of but Team But, Ian, that sounds tiring. I know. It's so tiring to have a shitty team too, Evan. Oh. You know, is, is it tiring to go home and then your wife see you unfulfilled because your team sucks? Yeah, Ian, but is I want tiring? a good relationship with my wife. I know, but, dude, is it so tiring that you're not going to figure out why Andy's relationship is better than yours and come down and invest and figure all those things out and go but cycle. But I don't have the time for that. I know, dude. You don't have the time for anything. But Ian, I can't invest die. the you're money in that. And you're gonna hate Ian, but I can't invest the time, energy, and capital it takes to I, I know. I know. Those are just average, low-limiting beliefs, and you're pathetic. And it's okay, but you're just going to live that miserable life your whole life. And that, that, to me, is like the worst shit ever because I'm like... You know, I play these two questions out in my head, Andy, and then I'll, I know you want to answer well, well, some no, questions. You never know when your life's going to end. So it's I like, always used to you think, I'm like, to... hey, I did this last night. There was this song that was like, um, um, like, where would I be if I didn't do this, right? And it's like, a, I can't remember what it was saying, but I started asking myself, where would I be if I didn't buy that plane ticket to see Andy? Where would I be if I didn't invest in that seminar? Where would I... I don't want to think about that. I get fucking sick, literally. I'm not even trying to cuss because it's Andy's podcast and he's trying not to cuss. And he's actually doing a good job of it, so I've been doing a better job at it. But I get physically ill thinking about not making decisions. And some of you, you're so indecisive when you call me or I talk to you. I just feel the indecision in you. And I'm like, gosh, that – like. and then you're like, oh, well, I don't know if I can do this. I'm like, that's your problem. But but see, I was that's there to – you know, we were stuck in indecision on a lot of things, and I, Ian nailed it. you got to get some coaches in your life that have a different perspective. We always mm -hmm. talk about getting a new set of eyes, yeah. getting a new set of eyes for your team, getting a new set of gratitude, getting a new set of eyes that can come in Every and day. say, hey – I'm not doing it right, but Andy talked about how do the top producers, the guys that continuously kill it for years, they get coachable, they don't get in their feelings, and they will write down right now one of, a couple of the things that they're taking from it right now, and they'll study it, and they'll figure out how to change. Evan, I got a good question. Sure. I know Andy's supposed to be asking the questions. Who's got a bit? Hey, did you, you know, because everybody wants to be Andy's leadership, you know? Let's talk about like the first year we were with Andy. Remember when he would just give those, just those, those freaking three hour, those three rip, hour, just, just, just ass ripping ass meetings ripping, and yeah. shit. Five you know, minutes. I think I was talking to me the whole time. Though. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But you probably <laughs> you didn't, said, you didn't, you didn't make about, that clear. No, but, but see, listen, everybody wants to work for like an Andy. Can you, you know, like, well, can you talk about the standard that Andy expects and like how that even works? Like, well, there's a lot of there? standards that Andy lives by, but Andy just the biggest example that Andy lives by is he's the guy. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that's willing to wake up early. He's the guy that's still willing to compete. Evan, he he's still the, has, he has all the dough. No, he's got the house. I, I don't even, he's got all this shit. The other day I went over to Andy's house. I went over to Andy's house to pick up my kids. We're over there till like 11 o'clock at night. And I show up there to pick him up. And Andy is still on, he's on, at his Island ripping apart two books. I mean, it's 11 o'clock. He's in a $10 million house that he's paid mm -hmm. cash for. I, I kind of, I had just left my house, by the way, and I wasn't doing Your those things. Your house is pretty nice, too. It's like, what? Yeah. It's just a little baby two million. Yeah, but I got a little I, – I walked – I called you right afterwards, yeah. and I'm like, dude, Ian, he's in his brand-new house. 
He's ripping apart these ever. books. He sits down and just starts telling me all these things. And I started taking notes on all the things, and it pissed me off yeah. because he was he doing me more. Off a lot. He was doing more than me. So let's just simplify it. You leaders out there, are you willing to do more than your team, mm-hmm. or how much? Is or Andy- or do you try to? Or are you trying to remove yourself oh, out of the good. company? This are you trying to remove good. yourself out of the team too early? Yeah. One of the things about Andy, he's still on the front lines. He's still making you mean the to calls. Tell me he still makes calls. He's still making the calls. He's still on the front lines. He's still closing. What does if that do for the team, dude? The morale on our team is always top notch because we don't. And as Ian and I have grown into leadership positions, we, we you got to still be in the fight. Yeah, you got to be the general that's walking next to your troops, not like from the back on the back on the top of the horse, like hey, go kill those guys. No, bro. Let's let's you be let's be right like the there. Sheet. Yeah, so one of the things about Andy, I mean, just following over the last couple of years, and some of you leaders could take from this. By the way, all of you guys are leaders. I got one question. This is what you have to do with your family. This is what you have to do with your teams. You got to be willing to do the work. You got to be willing to do the hard stuff. You got to be willing to take the trash out when your wife says take the trash out. Now, now let me ask you this. Okay, so if you're a salesperson, you have a leader that's pressing you, because I wanted to get at that, and Andy presses us every day, all day. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with Andy Preston? Yeah, because there's a lot of leaders that do are great leaders, and there's salespeople on here like, oh, man, like I'm just getting pressed. You know, you like, lean into it. You lean into it. it. What do you do when you have a leader that is like Andy that wants you to have it all well, and push Well, hard? when you got somebody like that, you have to first believe in Andy's intention. Sometimes Andy would piss me off, and it would take me back to my old life where I'm like, oh, this guy's – like because – I, I came from a, a position where there wasn't a lot of people that had good intentions. So mm-hmm. if you as a leader have good intentions and your team knows it, Andy's good at reminding us, hey, that what I'm about to tell you comes from from my heart. Mm-hmm. And then and even when he doesn't say that and he just goes right into it, mm-hmm. you know, you're like, dude, that's how this guy grew to this way. I'm just going to listen. I'm going to be coachable. I have to suppress my ego constantly because I know if I want to grow, it, it starts there. That's, that's just the simplest thing. Yep. If you want to be coachable, you have to look in the mirror and you have to say, I'm not good as good as I can be. Mm-hmm. But if this guy's better than me, if he has the life that I want, if he has the body, the mindset, the sales skill, mm-hmm. why aren't you just doing what the play that he's running? Mm-hmm. Stop running your play. Your play is getting what you what you're getting. Mm-hmm. He's going to hand you the ball. He's going to say, run through that hole. But you're but running I, through that I, hole. But that there, 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 there's an open hole right there. No, but that's not the hole. He said run through that hole. But, but there, that there, hole's got no, people in it. Run there, through those people. Uh, no, but I don't want to run through those people. No, I run around smack them. those people in the ass. Run right through them. Run but right I over I just them. want to run around. You it's already open. lost. You already lost. You're yeah, looking for the open hole. You're looking for the easy shit. That's some of you guys. Yeah. All right, Andy, what questions do well, you got? Well, I, <laughs> well, I think w- would, would you guys agree that your greatest growth has come from when you decided to be honest with yourselves? Yeah. Totally. Totally. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about that. And that's like every day. Yeah. Let's talk about that. What are some things that you guys talked about, like I'm being honest? Well, you would always tell us you're skinny as shit and people aren't going to respect you if they don't believe in your discipline muscle and they don't see your discipline edge. And I always thought, man, and I always wanted to get in more shape, but I just would drink on the weekends and I wouldn't do shit that, that contributed to be getting healthier. So my first biggest transformation was looking in the mirror like you did and saying, holy shit. Like I got to get more muscle, do, and do, if people believe, and if I'm gonna go cl- talk bigger deals, people are gonna have to see that I actually can take care of myself. So, so let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. So, and and you know, because when I got a hold of you guys, that was your old life. Yeah, you got you weighed about how much? 140 pounds. Yep. So 140. 140 what do you guys weigh now? 185. Yeah. Yeah. So 45 pounds up. Mm-hmm. It's obviously you guys don't have any fat on you, so Not it's 45 pounds of muscle. Fat, yeah. You know what I mean? And then um, let's talk about like uh, some other things, like getting honest with yourself, the way that you treat people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's led you guys into really good marriages. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, finding women that are just, you know, like your yeah, girls we we've are, never been yeah. around that, so we I never mean, really like we're we're, <laughs> we're 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 well, what I mean, we've never been around that. We didn't have there wasn't males in where we lived in the inner city that like treated women good. Like it was, it just never happened, right? So our mom was has been single, you know, her whole life. Our dad left when we were kids. And uh, so we just grew up watching a lot of the bad things happening. And, you know, my grandpa was married for 60 years. So I had like this good example that I just didn't really see. Like I, I saw him a lot. You but see I just, it now. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, dude, it, it was right there. But like I was so blind to what I saw. And my grandpa treated my grandma amazingly. Right. So now I can go back and see that. But growing up, I idolized like the drug dealers and a lot of the shit, the Scarface shit. Like that's just how we grew up. Right. So but when it came to women and these things, we just didn't really know what we knew and i remember when i met you guys it Plus, was I, like, I almost i think i think we had a, a skewed vision of what a woman could do in your life totally i think we thought that i i mean i didn't think i didn't know what a power couple even meant to yeah be some people you. a lot of people 
still, still don't. Yeah, yeah. When we saw if Jackie. If you get a good woman, yeah, like. They're married and still don't. Know. Yeah. They still don't. But yeah. when we saw Jackie and the way y'all operated, the, the first time when we decided to work for Andy, I'll this tell you This is the when, truth. We, we said, Andy was telling us a little bit about like, hey man, this is the Elliot, we're going to open the Elliot group, this is how it's going to be, like, you know, we'd love for you guys to do we're, this, and we were like, man, this, we love this, mm -hmm. you know, but we're like, hey, you know how we're really going to know if this guy's full of shit or yeah, not? Yeah, we're like, dude, is, you think this guy's putting on a show, think he's or just, and we're, is he Dude, real? We're, we're, we're in jobs where we're like, we have our dream lives. We're working like three, four days a week, we're selling 50, 60, 70 cars, I mean, we're crushing it, we're doing it on autopilot, like, he's helped us get to a level where we know he's great, but we're like, is it full of shit? Like, we don't know. So we were like, let's fly down and like spend time with his wife yep. and like his family and see how his kids run. And you could just see like Jackie was so different. But she would talk about how she was not there. And then Andy made a decision and then she made a decision. And then we just, we envied like their relationship and how hard they worked on it and how hard behind the scenes like, it wasn't about being perfect. They would yell at each other, and, like, they would fight, which was super cool because <laughs> yeah. she would kick Andy's ass. And yeah, it's, like, it's no, the only time you yeah. start seeing Andy backpedal on it's anything. Greatest, He's just like, greatest. oh, no. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, like, well, and then, then she traps least, him, and she'll trap and she you so trap quick. She'll dude, and she'll just, Cah! Yeah, and she know? just, oh, it's um, the, and it was, so when they still fight to this day, it's, it's just, it's, 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 it's really fun. We um, have fun. It's a great moment for us. <laughs> Uh, we try to provoke it. We try to get Andy into yeah, a couple like, traps Yeah, we're like, he said there. this. You know, yeah. he said he's not allowed to say this. Yeah, and then he's like, I didn't say that. And then you know? dad's <laughs> getting his ass kicked. All right. But anyways, what we saw was, like, how much value Jackie added, added to Andy's yes. life. But we also saw the background of that decision. And then we just started saying, man, like, that's what we're going to find. And so we just cut the bullshit. Like, we literally cut the bullshit, and then we attracted tents. Like, you know, we attracted fitness models that are, like, great women, women of God, found them in church. Like, we just... We went from like and, attracting the, the and, club hosts and to like hot and smart, smart, yes. and, amazing, and with beautiful. Well, and the, well, with Andy us. always, Andy like, always. But it was just it was a total identity shift internally, yeah. was which, which is what he went through. Yes. And then it was an identity shift externally that people saw and it attracted the right thing. We always say you can attract the customer if you're the person. Like you can attract the right audience no matter who you are. Pros don't have to chase business; they just attract business because of who they are. Right. And you can attract the wife that you want. You can attract the marriage that you want. If you're not that person right now, let you go become that person and then watch what she does oh, yeah. or he does. And, 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 and you can do that in your current relationship now. Totally. Too. You know, we see so many people and we've got guys in our company that have made such big transitions that their wives now are uh, as alive as they've ever been. Totally. You know, we get so many people that reach out to us and they're like, thank you for giving our husbands back because now they see how you guys run. Totally. And so now we are honestly the best but, transformations. But, but that started with Andy making hard decisions, you know, in a garage when his wife grabbed his back fat and said, hey, you're fat, you're getting comfortable. Like, and then he went, he got mad and went and put in the work. And then well, he, he did some shit about it. What did yeah. you do? Andy invested in a book. What was that book? The $100 million deal? Or what, no, what was that one book? Well, I bought the first course I bought was a broker blueprint. It was a three grand course by yeah. Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi and Russell Brunson. But see, like, and let's go I back started, through that. Started buying books. It was, it was. I immediately needed to do information mm -hmm. to become a different person. But see, there's some power yeah. in there's some there's there's actually a superpower <laughs> in this decision. Listen, listen. Go through that. All right. So hold on. He's let me just let me just let's just go back real quick. He was getting his ass kicked. He didn't like who he was. He went in the garage. Got really pissed off. And see, that's where most people just go back. They don't go be exceptional because they don't make exceptional decisions in a really hard moment. Right. He goes and invests money, does a new action, and that new action leads to a new belief. That new belief leads to a new life. And he starts in. in and then right now when he's, he's getting in this shit. He starts pouring yeah. into himself to become a different person. That's where many people stop. I know why I'm really good at my job because I have to talk a lot of you into having that good life every day. I know what you're capable of. I know if you're over this, over you're behind this camera, you decided that you wanted a better life, but you reach out, you're sitting in the shit, and you don't even have the courage to get out of it. You don't have a courage to make a decision. So I got to be great at what I do to either knock your team into having new courage to go to the next level because I can take, I know that. I had that same moment as Andy where I made decisions when I was down and it's what brought me up. But some of you, you you're down and you just drive yourself lower. You just drive your team lower. If your team's getting your ass kicked right now, what would you do? 
you don't just continue on the same path. You make decisions. Oh, well, I don't have five grand in the bank. I can't uh, invest five grand. Yeah. Okay, you'll never have the team. Oh, well, I, I don't have that. Okay, you'll never, it's called figure it the fuck out mode. You figure it out, you make the investments. It's always gonna cost. Andy's favorite thing is more than you wanna pay. And you make those when it's hard. People are always saying the uncomfortable quotes online and then they don't live by them. Living by them is when you don't have it, you still have to have it. Yep. Yeah, and I'll say something like this is super important. And I think this is something that's really hard to teach because a lot of people don't really understand it. And it's because they're not mature enough. Yeah, it's true. Maturity comes with yes. with progress, right? Like yep. as you're growing in the beginning, you're immature, but you're focusing on ROI. Like how much can I make? You know, how much you're actually thinking, can I work less and make more? Yes. Totally. Which is very immature. <laughs> totally. Right. Yes. But that's what people think. Um, but then after a while, you start to realize that like, who you become is more important than how much you make or any of that. Yep. So if you work harder on yourself than you do on your job, which no one does, but if you do, do we do it yeah. and we, we, we beg people. We're like, dude, listen, no one look to your left, look to your right. No one else is begging you to go become your best self. Right. I mean, no one is, no one's saying, come on, man. Well, well we are. And then we'll give you the blueprint. It's simple. Educate yourself, have new experiences, be around new information and you know become like, a new person uh, yeah become a new person you got to change your language uh you do have to change your body it's a mm -hmm. part of it because it's a radical shift. yep um you, you have to change you know you have to change your, your like i said the way you speak you know mm -hmm. i can't do that you know stuff like that doesn't happen for people like me you got to create a new belief system but one of the coolest things that i like and i'm letting you guys be the energy and i'll kind of be chill mm -hmm. is that is that i'm going to give a quote here and you guys have ne never heard me say this most people are like um, you know, I'll do something for you. You do something for me because we're friends, right? Mm -hmm. Don't get friends like that. I'll do something. I'll, I'll get me better. I'll do something for me, for you. Mm -hmm. Because when I get better, if we're all three friends and I'm trying to do stuff for you and I'm trying to do stuff for you and you're doing stuff for me, that just is operating at a friendship. You want to know what a real friend is? Mm -hmm. If you really love your family, I'll get better for you. Mm, okay? I like that. Why? Because when I get better, when I get it 10 times get stronger, better. when I get 10 times smarter, when I get 10 times better and I'm your friend, dude, what do you think happens to you? Totally. Mm -hmm. How much value does our friendship have when I get better? Yeah. That's a good shit. So like, like most people are like, you know, Hey, like, you know, you take care of me. I take care of you. No, it's like, dude, I'll take care of me for you. Yeah. Mm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and the reason why is because if you want to help your brother, yep. You have to get better. Well, well, that's why we've always been big totally. team guys. You know, like everybody, one of the big things, you know, we've always wanted and we've always been good at building teams and getting people better. And even though we've always been top sales pros, we always trained everybody around us because we were always trying to give, 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 give because we knew when other people got better, the competitor in us, we weren't going to be the same people. Oh, these guys are going to get better and then they're going to catch me. No, I'm still getting better. So I'm going to continue to raise my standard too. And if I'm watching other people raise our standard, that's how you ultimately yeah. build a, a movement. That's how you build a company. And I think that's one of the critical failures right now in a lot of companies and actually just in the United States is, is committing to that personal excellence for yourself. Yeah. And then when people are around you, every time I'm around my friends that come to the Elliot group for the first time or our clients, when they see how we live, yeah. when they truly, cause you don't know anything over the internet, you can see our energy. You can yeah. watch Andy it online, still be bullshit. but when, when, when you come down here and you see how we live, that's the real shit. You're you know, you're like, these guys cannot fake that. This is crazy. Yeah. And it will motivate you to get better. So that's the same thing because we, we've done so much to become these people because we don't want to go back to our old lives because we do have a big why, because we are competitors, because we do truly give a shit. Mm -hmm. But more than anything, we do it because we want to make the person next to us better because we're trying to be better. Yep. Mm -hmm. I totally. think that's our, I think you nailed it. That's our, yeah. one of our biggest keys. Yeah. Well, and then that's, that's the reason why we even have a company because yeah. if you didn't get better, you wouldn't have attracted level 10 players. Well, I already know that I'm a level 10 player. All right. Not being arrogant, I'm just. Well, if you're a level ten, I'm a level twenty because no, I beat you most no, of my dude. life. But the see, only thing the you ever beat me was being I know born I'm first. Kick everybody's ass you only beat me one time. Huh? I was only being that born was the first. Most important competition. Just so you know, if you guys are you trying to decipher, if you guys are trying to decipher, did you just which smack my hand. Yes, I did. If you're trying to, <laughs> I'm gonna bitch smack him on this. Oh, bitch smack! You want to get beat up on Andy's podcast? I'm gonna throw you into the podcast. The only, you know, so just so you're, if you're trying to figure out who, which twin is who, Ian's the one that's just yelling at y'all right now, and I'm just kind of watching. He's the one with spit all around his microphone, just. 
just yeah, ah. anybody who gets my microphone is gonna be a little bit like, whoa, what happened here? Yeah, and it might smell nasty because yeah. it's horse hiccup breath. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> hey, He's got horse hiccups for breath. It's true, dude. It's true. It's true. Evan's a little bit more funny. I'm a little bit more intense. I just want to drive this point into your soul because I know a lot of you watching this ain't gonna do shit about it. You just sit on the couch eating Cheetos, yeah, freaking you know jelly donut dust in your freaking belly button, and you may not want to do something about it. So my goal is, I like to just really piss some people off. My brother's like the velvet hammer. He'll come through and patiently work on you and like little baby shit like that. Me, <laughs> me I'm both. just gonna just both. piss your ass off. I do like, a little just, bit of both. No, my brother's really good. We have good. two different styles. That's the, that's no, the thing about it. Evan's got a good it. style. I like Evan's well, style. Well, Sometimes I'd want to steal Evan's style because, you know, like, I just got, like, one mode. Evan's got, like, No, my brother modes. is very impatient. He's got, like, One of the modes. biggest keys to Ian, he's very impatient well, when it comes to anything. You, to make a decision. Yeah. you know, he just wants, he Either, wants to win now and right now, and, like, let's not wait even another minute. Yeah, yeah so I, I, think, I think we should talk about how underdogs crush Goliath yeah. every day and how if somebody doesn't have a great team right now or if there's an individual watching Ooh, this is a good question. Yeah, but, like, if there's an individual watching this right now um, because there are a lot of solo people yeah. right? Yeah. and we're building them to be great leaders for companies or to own their own businesses mm -hmm. um, this is the kind of intensity guys and positivity it does take to create any kind of momentum and to create any empire absolutely totally. okay your own individual empire or a company empire um, a lot of people will watch you guys and they'll be like man these guys are, are wild yeah mm -hmm. okay, true yeah. we are Totally. That's true. They are. Um, crack open any successful person and they're crazy. Mm -hmm. Just just want to say that. Um, I don't want to be anything like normal. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're abnormal, then I'm grateful to be around them because I don't want to be around normal people because normal people work a nine to five. Um, they're broke. They never go on vacation. Right. They literally get married and their wives fall out of love with them. They sleep in the same bed and they're miles apart. They don't have sex anymore. They literally hate themselves. They get fat. They get out of shape. They don't lead anybody. They help no one else in their life. Mm -hmm. They literally walk around with a hole in their heart. They're going to die with regrets, and they're going to be sitting on a bedpan one day saying, I remember that podcast when I watched those guys, and I had a decision I could have made. Mm -hmm. And I took a left and went easy road, the four-lane highway that most people take, the 99 percenters, or I could take the 1 percent road, which is – you know, the unbeaten path, yep. it's, it's, it's pretty tough. It's kind of rocky, but it's really tough being a loser, and it's tough being a winner, which yeah. I was talking about earlier. And the key to getting all of this stuff is truly just by proximity of being around the right coaches. Um, any good coach that did a good job in your life is one that you remember um, because you probably hated them when they were coaching. Exactly. Totally. Big time. Totally. Yeah, so, like, Ian coaching you, like, you may be like, oh, I don't like this. Good. Well, listen, a good coach doesn't care if you like them. Their goal is they'd rather you hate them and get, get better, better than like them and stay the same. Yeah, yeah. Mo most of the clients that I coach, they're like, dude, Ian, you're a little hard on me. But then they thank me three months later or when their YTD comes out and they're really happy with who they are um, or once they beat the problems. But you, you mentioned a couple things. You said, hey, how do you if I'm a new salesperson, how do I beat a Goliath? Dude, I've got the magic key for you that will literally unlock everything Lean you're in. looking for. So if I was an underdog wanting to beat a Goliath, if I was the company, if I was the person, it's all going to come down to one thing. And it's the magic word that none of you like. It's called work. work. The magic that you're looking for is in the work that you guys aren't doing. That's it. So if I was going to beat anybody, the Achilles heel to the world right now is that most of you motherfuckers don't want to work. So if I wanted to beat you, all I would do is outwork you for a couple of years. And then it would start to get easier, but I would maintain my level of work ethic. I would kill you. I would step on your neck and, and then them. I would out self develop you and I would do everything that Andy's saying as far as proximity, coaching, investing in myself. But the facts are the facts. If I'm a salesperson and you're competing with me and I have like a family, I've been doing this for two or three years, I got some money in the bank, I'm likely not going to be working that like insane schedule. And if you're a underdog coming for a Goliath, you have to know that they're going to have some weak points or they have some things down. that they can't do or they're going to slow down because they got money, they got they a couple of safe. things. Yep. They're they going to pay it safe. Cash in the bank, they start yeah. it so yeah. all you have to do is just go psycho. And, and psycho is going to come in the form of, like, if you're really working hard. I was driving home, like, a year ago, and I was I, maybe I wasn't working to, my cap like to Andy's capability, but I was working really hard in my brain. And I was just trying to figure everything out. I'm going crazy. I'm breaking records. You know, I'm doing all this good shit. But I, I pulled over the car, um, and, and my eye was twitching, and my whole face was, like, numb. And I was like, oh, I'm having a stroke. Like, I'm having a stroke. I hadn't slept in like three days. <laughs> and uh, this so happened a couple of times to and us. It, it, it did happen a couple of times. I was like, maybe it's because I drank five Red Bulls. Maybe it's because I drank nine coffees. Maybe it's because I gave 14 sales meetings. 
and I'm just nobody will ever beat me. That just that just I just feel that in my heart. My identity is being the best, and it makes me miserable when I'm not. So yeah. I would much rather pursue that psycho, ridiculous version of myself and have some of you just jealous, making fun of me because I'm psycho. While you're, I'm jealous. I'm looking at your paychecks, and I'm like, I can't believe that's what you do this for. Yeah. Well, like again, you know, I. I remember, you know, some people make 50 grand a year. Some people make 50 grand, you know, a month. Some people make 50 grand an hour. Some people make 50 grand, you know, an hour. Like, like, like guys, like, listen to me. Like, you need to understand that this, if you're in the United States, especially, uh, they print free money. Um, So if you're not getting it, you have to be doing everything wrong. Totally. So get around people like us that are telling you how to do it right. But one of the things that I'll tell you, like Patrick, but David, we look up to him him a lot. Totally. And he says, you know, he literally has worked so hard that, you know, he's been hospitalized. Yeah, that was me. And, 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 and people, they're, they're, they're like, oh, like that's that. not like, like that's, uh, not very, uh, that's too much. Uh, I, need a, I need the balance. Little, um, yeah. You know what? I see people who don't care. Who get, get hospitalized all the time. Who get super depressed mm-hmm. because their life is absolutely a sack of shit and mm-hmm. they hate it. And they're watching other people live these big badass dreams and they're depressed and they're hospitalized. Totally. So, like, if you don't care, like, be prepared to get hospitalized one day by being depressed. Right. Mm-hmm. Or care and give all you got and then run your body to these extremes and your mind to these extremes, which really your body's resilient. Yeah, yeah. your body wants Those it. Those times, uh, your body was going through a breakthrough. Yeah. So well, I think that's down, why I got the energy and mentality through. like how I have now. I always tell yeah, people about through. your energy and, like, how you're able to do what you do. And it's because you have, like— you have forced the mold so hard. You have broken that mold so hard on yourself that it's, well, like, it's like stretching a balloon. You can't. Like, it, it can't ever go come back. Back to its normal mm-hmm. self. You have str- you have physically stretched yourself uh, to that next level where they're like your your mind can now comprehend that level. Well, like, you know, one of the reasons why I think we stretched ourselves. There was se- there were several. T- there's been several times in the Elliot Group where we've booked out multiple events in one week. We have booked out our Zoom calendars. Like we yeah. we got so bit. We got we started really attacking it so viciously. I remember going into one month. I remember I can't. I think it was like a, back when we had like um, it was. Uh, the was it boiler like, room, and yeah. it was like it was we like had, four things back room, to back to back. Bradley, one and I remember going into that month thinking, how, how in the hell, hell are we going to make this? it through this? How like, are we going to be able to keep energy. our revenue numbers up? How are we going to be able to talk to our like everything was going through my mind? And at the end of the month, we had our best month ever. Mm-hmm. We smashed it, and, and after that, something. it was almost easy. Yeah. And th- then I was thinking, okay, how do we take out these Goliaths? Well, we just keep doing that, yeah. and if we keep stretching ourselves, we're going to get so dang good at this that nobody can take and us. Now out. that's where we're at. Watch, but here's what's cool: if you were to relook at that month now, yeah, that was two years ago, you would be like, "That's not even a month." Yeah, You'd even be hard. Like, I can't believe we're under book. Right, but you know what the formula is? For <laughs> yeah, that? the formula for it is: if you want to get out of uncomfort, if you want to get out of comfortability, you have to break it. So number one is break, seek, and amplify. If you seek uncomfortability, then you're going to break through the mold. And so break it, seek it, and then amplify it. Amplify it is, dude, I watched you go door-to-door on dealerships. I watched us get thrown out. Like, yep. I watched you go in front of stores that didn't even know who we were, didn't want us there. And you just kept amplifying all of the shit you were able well, to Well, people do. think Andy was just created this way. They no, think dude, it was lucky honestly, or something honestly, like that. Honestly, you know why we said, hey, he's going to be the number one speaker in the world? And we used to, when we first started this, because of what we saw Andy do within a few people, like, we were like, dude, never we've never seen before. anything like this. We were willing to give up our entire lives to do it. We were willing to like, we're yeah. like, if we could take his message to number one in the world, we, you know how many millions of people need that? And that sounded crazy, you know, you know, four years ago. Now it doesn't sound crazy when there's millions of followers. Our brand is recognized in every airport. You can't walk through the airport. People are chasing us down and shit. But it sounded crazy four years ago. But you lived in that, that amplify zone of uncomfortability. We would look at your schedule and be like, Bro, how's he doing this? Like, we'd be like, this is insane. Like, we'll just laugh. Well, you know, but well, we, that's why we also said he's going to be the number one speaker because the speakers that are out there, the trainers that are out there, they the train once yeah, but or twice. Here's the difference. Like, this dude's training 15 here's times the difference. a day. Here's the difference between Andy, though. He was, and this, this just goes into everything that you have to do. 
Andy's a bigger student than all of you guys. All of you that are watching this, I assure you, one of the biggest things that is the key is Andy was never nervous going into those meetings. Never nervous. All, to all of the speaking, money. all of the speaking engagements, he was prepared. He's prepared with our team as we grew it. Yep. You know, he's got this psycho stirred up. Like I got to get ready for Legendary the next level obsession. all the time. And yeah, and that's the obsession that we have. It it it's it, it spread to our team. If you come into the Lions Den and you see our team, when they shake your hand, you're gonna be. You're going to think, oh, my God, what the heck is wrong with these people? They're obsessed because he's obsessed. Can you have a? Can you be a leader out there that's a less, like, that has none of that right now and become that? No. Talk about that. Can you become that? You probably, you're going to have to have some of the makings of what you we're could, talking about. You could, but a about. lot of the times. But if you're on the Zoom, I swear, if you're a guy that's right now thinking, like, I'm so close to that. Like, I just can't figure this next piece out. You're qualified to be something like Andy. I swear to God. Right now, if you're like, hey, there's a couple things I know I'm not doing. Number one, you're admitting it you're honest to yourself so you can grow and then number two what are you going to do about it if you plug into something like this i've watched thousands of leaders change their entire companies from the fortune 100 companies to the mom and pop shops triple their profits quadruple their go crazy and more than anything get rich in their heart because they started operating differently like Mm -hmm. you know we have the brotherhood right we have some of the top clients Andy focuses on are in his brotherhood mentorship and there's some of you out there that you need that executive level push you need that executive level coaching so that you can build this because you have more at stake you have more at stake so you're going to have to run towards this pressure or that pressure is going to come into your life well, and fold you gotta, one way or another number one they, they got it and they and they want it they got to get that edge yes mm-hmm. they got to get that edge like and it feels good to know that your edge is dangerous yes totally. it feels the best good feeling to in the know world. that your competition your name is in their mouth and they can't stop talking about you because your edge is so freaking sharp yeah. totally and oh, real quick, Andy. Hey, we have a new YouTube channel that we just dropped, and it's called the Macklin Twins. If you go to it, we're just posting a video a day. It's just on general sales, fired upness. If you like this, go watch it. If you don't, please don't go follow it because you'll turn into just a little baby hater or something. But I assure you, like if you're following this, you probably hey, love you our shit. It, you'll be, you'll wash your brain. Hey, you'll, you'll, it'll wash your brain into a savage. But go follow our, our deal on Instagram, and then um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Well, or, I, on, I on YouTube, YouTube, yeah, YouTube, yeah, YouTube, YouTube is the all Macklin I'm talking twins? about. The Macklin Twins. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think with anything with with leaders, you know, especially nowadays, I think people, especially after COVID, people got comfortable. It was easy in every industry, and people are starting to wake up that bringing real, true sales and leadership is important. Dude, you got to get so it, true. It's, if you're if not you putting on it, rich, yes, it, you know. And so, man, I just love the Elliot Group because guys walk in here and they change, they transform, they have those we breakthroughs, have and they walk never out. Had a customer, and I mean this, we've never had one customer whether they bought. You know, and I know during this video we've given out y'all's y'all cell phone number so people can. I don't think we did. And, and oh yeah, we. Out. Yeah, we've given it oh, out. Oh okay. I, I made that to okay. make sure that people would know how to get a hold of you guys. But I I know that a lot of people they don't know what's possible. They don't. And so what we know is that we've had one hundred percent, and I mean like there's zero people who haven't succeeded in this, who've ever reached out, who got involved, whether it's a digital training program that somebody can train on from the house and log in you know, 10, 15 minutes a day to mm-hmm. change their whole life um, or coming out to, to train with a big live event or getting into a, a high mentorship program, right? Mm-hmm. Um, whatever they've gotten in, every single person that's taken action on something, mm-hmm. their ROI was always a thousand percent. Yeah. You spend a dollar with us, you get a thousand in return. Mm-hmm. It's the way it works. It will always work that way. And I just think that what we're praying is that, you know, like God, just break people of their weaknesses, totally. let them know what they are, and then help them find someone that yeah. wants to truly help them fix them. Mm-hmm. And that way you guys will realize you got one life. It's really short. You got a lot to do. And so whether you're young or you're old, if you're young, you damn sure don't want to waste your life. So you need to start now. And then if you're older, well, you already know what it's like to piss your life away for a while. Yeah, totally. It's like, dude, you got to wake up now. And then if you're a, le- a, a leader... Um, which, by the way, everybody is a leader. Um, you know, a leader is to self-lead and then lead others and then lead others to build more leaders. Totally. But e- everybody's a leader watching this. I know? agree. Evan, and, Evan, say a prayer for us. Say a prayer for these people. Every, uh, every, let's say one. say a prayer right now? Yeah, say one. Let's okay, and then I got a question for mm-hmm. Andy. Say one. Right. I um, just I just felt like the need for a prayer. Let's do it. I like that. Ian, you're smart. You're a smart, you're a smart and good-looking twin. Thank you. Um, God, we just pray today that everybody can break their weaknesses and, you know, look in the mirror and just realize that you have made them to be great and there's so much more inside of them. 
if they can en- enhance some new qualities and find some new information. They're, re- they're listening to this podcast for a reason. I just pray that they lean into it. I pray that they lead into a positive community of people that believe in them. God, I just pray that every single day uh, we find some new breakthroughs with you. We get closer to you. There's things that we know and that we can't figure out as human beings, and, and we don't need to figure out that you're providing guidance to us in every way. All we need is the support. All we need is the love. God, I just pray that every day, um, you know, we just get better as leaders, and I pray that our families get more healthy and, and that our, our lives are more clear, and we're walking a path of purpose and meaning and health and wealth and Every day we're looking at ourselves and we know we're getting some progress in our life. God, I just pray that all of our viewers get progress and they get more passionate and they get more intense. God, I know that if you even look around, you see that you respect people that are different and that want it and that truly want to become better. God, I just pray that every single person that hears our voice understands our heart and our intentions and through this podcast and everything that they do around our team. And I pray for our team. I pray that our team is delivering right now on this fo- on the phones and emails and messages the passion and courage it's going to take to help people make decisions. I pray every time, every day that our team breaks themselves of their weaknesses so they can continue to lead not through fraudulent actions of saying they want to be great, but our team actually is the best. Our team is elite, and I know that our team is doing that today, God, and I just pray that every day you put more obstacles in their path that they can crush and build more self-esteem. God, I just pray that every single second we get better and better, and I pray that Andy continues to become the best leader in the world for us, and every day our our families get better. God, thank you so much. Amen. Amen! That was a good prayer. That's why I told him Um, to do that. I knew somebody out there needed that. Sorry, I could keep going. I felt it, dude. When I'm praying, I'm just thinking to myself what I want. Yeah, Yeah, I just just like that. What were you going to say, though? You said you had a question. Um... You know, I wanted to ask Andy, who's your favorite twin, Andy? Why don't He's you just going to dad that, that shit. He you, knows it's, it's me, it's, dude. Don't dad it. It's He's whoever, whoever has the most revenue. And that's me today. Um, yeah, well, it's whoever usually. Um, nah, they're both the same. Even four years in, I would be like, twins. You know, I wouldn't say Ian or Evan because I just, I just, you know, it's like they look the same. Yeah. But I know you're totally different now. Yeah. Like, matter of fact, you both look like two complete different people. But for three or four years, you know, almost I was struggling with, like, looking for the tattoo on the arm. You yeah. know what I mean? To, to see who's who. Just, but now, I'm, I mean, my favorite, I mean, you're, you guys change places all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, not to be my favorite, but you'll go crazy and then he'll cool. Yeah. And then he'll go crazy and you'll cool. Mm-hmm. And then you'll both cool, and then you'll both go crazy, and then one will stay crazy, and one will cool. You guys just you rotate around nonstop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, but you're both unreal. You both are amazing. You both are super coachable. You both have the biggest hearts ever. You know, I mean, these guys they'll, they'll cry in sales meetings, and you know, I say that because I've been the same way. You know, anytime I hear a, a testimony of somebody changing their life, like it, it's hard for me not to cry. Mm-hmm. Totally. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's like, damn, man. I mean, I just believe, man. I just believe that. You know, we're living the best lives ever, and I want other people to live this life, and I want we, other people to have this perspective. Yeah, I just want people to have the perspective that they can do this, that they that we believe in them. There's a lot of people who don't believe in people anymore. I mean, it's everybody. Mm-hmm. And just what we do is just so cool, man. It's the coolest job in the world because it's not even a job. It's our life. Well, our life is so cool because we get to force this energy into people all day long. It doesn't get tiring. It doesn't get exhausting. It's, it's just amazing, and... I just think there's people right now that are listening to this that are on the brink of a breakthrough and that if they take action on this, boom, they got their breakthrough. And And we don't want no credit. I just want you to, I want you to go out and, and help other people so we can continue this movement of really building the next generation. Well, the only way you're going to change the world is that if there's 9 billion people or whatever it is, we got to build more leaders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like our number one goal is to build as many leaders as we can. Yeah. We want to make you guys rich. We want to make you guys a lot of money. But we truly want you to just live by human excellence. Right. Truly. And raise your standards to a level that's just so impressive that other people are like, dude, I want to be like you. Yeah. Yep. And then, like, it's like positive peer pressure. We just positively peer pressure people to be better every day. That's yeah. It. Um, but anybody watching this, make sure you guys reach out to us, okay? If you have a team, if you're an individual, it doesn't matter. Um, we always say there's the day you're born, the day you die, and the day your life changes forever. Mm-hmm. And literally, man, like you said, you're like, what if I didn't buy that plane flight? Yeah. 
where would you be? You're like, I don't want to think about that. And I'll tell you, your life will change forever. You reach out to me. You want to connect with Andy. You want to go deeper. Just be ready, man. Just be ready for that great life. Be ready to put the work in that it takes to get there. It's not very far away. And, no. and you're right there, man. You know, a lot of people quit right before the breakthrough. And that's why they never really truly get what they want. So if you resonated with this and you do want to have a conversation, I think um, people, I'm always wanting to have those conversations. I think people think that they're like a few way, years away from the big life mm -hmm. when really it's just the one decision. It's mm -hmm. the one decision There's that leads that to everything. A, a week from now could be making three times as much as they're making. Yeah. Now. That's no bullshit. There's people that a week from now could literally save their marriage. Right. Um, could literally. Well, we've seen guys that you've that yeah. we've talked to that are here that go home and they have a new perspective and instantly everything. Well, has your changed. perspective is everything, and that's so, why you have a coach is because sometimes you can't see the truth and you're just seeing a whole bunch of lies that you've created in your head. Mm -hmm. So. And I think that's why Ian. That's why we all. You know, we all have this edge where we get. A, you know, it, you can sense some type of frustration, and the reason being is because we know what is possible, and but we know, we know what's possible. Yeah, and we know what's what. It happens if you yeah, don't so we're like, like the we decision. Swear, like, we're we like, swear. oh, please, just just listen. You know, and it's it's it has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with meaning and purpose. And what what happens? One of the reasons why Andy continues to get crazier and crazier and crazier is because he's living in meaning and purpose. My my goal for all you viewers out there is to is to figure out how to live in this zone. And if you could just take a little bit of what we said, shoot, if you could just take ten percent of this. Your life would already change. Mm -hmm. If you've made it this far, you are a one percenter. Mm -hmm. If you went and followed Ian and I's YouTube, you're like a point point oh one percenter because you're really coachable. Yep. And just know that the twins got your back. Andy Elliott's got your back. The Elliott group, we're going to always continue to self-develop. There's nobody that can stop us except us. We know that all we have to do is get better and better and better. You guys are going to get better and better and better. Companies are going to get better and better and better. And all of a sudden, now we look up and... People are just more happy, man. And there's yeah. nothing that's cooler than seeing people happy and winning. Yeah. And by, by the way, like, again, you don't know when you're going to die. So that's an uncontrollable. Yeah. You don't, you don't control it. So, you know, like, let's just make sure nobody has any regrets. So if you know there's more potential in you, okay, just make sure you reach out. That's it. And we'll take it from there. Yep. So love you guys. Love you, man. Appreciate Thank you, you guys. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate Thank you, buddy. everything. We will see you guys in the next podcast. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I just want to stay that stay mad shit by my shoulder because they treat me like an outcast. I ain't gonna hey, guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.